partner in crime, managing editor of UV Magazine, Mr. Art Edinger. Please, please, sit down, panel. Y'all get a mic. Here, Art, I gotta have the other. All right. Kiss me. Kiss me. Yeah, I've been blabbing for a while, sending everybody with uh, horrible off-color jokes. I'm gonna let Art introduce our panel down the row, and then you all give them a big giant uh, hand of applause, and we'll begin this thing. Welcome to Cinema Wasteland 19, everybody. And here we have the esteemed Ruggiero Deodato panel. And um, starting on my right, the luminary director Ruggiero Deodato himself. Francesca Chardi from Cannibal Holocaust. Michael Berryman, who worked with Deodato on Cut and Run, The Barbarians, and other films. David Hess, another living legend. Appeared in House on the Edge of the Fork. You have one right in front of you. And um, Carl Gabriel York. I can count. We got enough. We have enough mics. Yeah, we just, are you okay? Do you have a microphone? Don't do that. Kind of I'm drunk test, and worthless, test. but believe me, we have mics. We have an <laughs> AV guy. He just dresses like <laughs> him. <laughs> Before we get to the legend himself, I thought maybe we could have each member of the panel describe what their first impressions were of Ruggiero Deodato when they met him. Yeah, excellent, oh, for excellent. Sakes. <laughs> well, then we won't start with you, Hess. <laughs> All right, well, I'll start. Hello. Hello. Uh, so I'm Carl York. I, uh, I'm in Cannibal Holocaust. Wow. Just saying that out loud it gives me the chills. Half, half the people, so, um, three quarters of the people here just saw you die. So, so yeah. Oh, did they play the movie? Yeah, already? we played the movie for the panel. Yeah. So, um, um, the scene where um, um, Guillermo's getting his leg cut off, that was the first day I arrived on the set. I don't, he, Guillermo, I don't know what his name was in the movie, but he was the guide. And he gets his leg cut off because he's gotten bitten by a snake. And they cut off, we cut off his leg so that he, he, um, the poison won't go into his body, but he dies anyway, of course. So, uh, that was my first day on the set. I'm, they, they, they brought me into Bogota, then two days later they brought me into Leticia by plane, there's only two planes a week into the little town, and uh, I hadn't read the script, and I um, had never met Ruggiero, and he'd never met me, and they um, put me in a boat, they, I got off the plane, I stopped at my uh, little bungalow, they put me in a boat, they drove me 45 minutes up the river, as I'm going up the river I see a human leg floating down the river, and I get to the set, and actually I had to walk across, it was all muddy, and you had to walk across these boards to get to the set, and Ruggiero looked at me and he goes, oh, what a beautiful face, what a wonderful face. Okay, <laughs> costumes, makeup, <laughs> and uh, they just, he just slapped me into a costume, and walked me right up to the edge of the, uh, the pit where uh, Guillermo was laying there all ashen, and uh, you know, I really wasn't sure what was going on, and, um, and uh, you know, we cut off his leg again, and that was my first shot, and that was my first impression of Ruggiero. Practically a leg cutter. Yes. Uh, um, I got a call at five o'clock in the morning from uh, from a guy named Sesto Chifero. And he says, you want to do a film? I said, get the fuck off the phone, man. It's too early for that shit. No, <laughs> you want to do a film? Well, well, that's what I do. Yeah, don't, don't call me later. No, no, we got to talk now because the director is here. Oh, so you're not the director. You just, no, the director is with me. Well, tell the director to go fuck himself. And call back later. <laughs> So, no, Ruggiero and I have done, what, six films together? Seven films? Six? How many? 
How many films have we done? How many done? films did you do with David? With David. Mm. Too much. There are too many films. <laughs> The answer to that, if you didn't but, catch it, was one too many. Any, anyway, um, the one I missed out on was Cannibal Holocaust, essentially. And, and, and I'm glad because I don't speak Spanish that well. Um, in any case, we're, we're old friends, good friends. And my, my first impression of him was uh, uh, when he picked me up at the airport and, uh, and didn't smile for 45 minutes back to Rome. Yes, you're allowed to clap. Go ahead. <laughs> I remember getting a call from a guy named uh, Robbie Little telling me about a director named Rogero Deodato on a movie we were doing in the Amazon. It was cut and run. And they sent me the script, and I had to get my uh, malaria pills and my passport up to, up to speed. And I, of course, checked on the globe um, where I was going to. Flew into Caracas. Uh, we had a lovely... Uh, uh, banquet dinner, uh, and it was hosted by a, a gentleman in a white uniform who was general of the national police. His name was Hugo Chavez, and actually a very, uh, very intriguing and interesting person. I had some conversations with him, uh, well, I'll share later at my table. And then the next day, we uh, uh, get to, in the airport, we fly way down into the Amazon and to Guyana. And in the canopy, if you don't know about the rainforest, well, it's pretty darn big down there, and you, and it's, it, you go back in time, it was just incredible. The oxygen content was, the air was thick, it was vibrant, you could feel and hear the, you know, the jungle grow. And at our hotel, which was very nice for Gerald, thank you, uh, we had these little, uh, little, um, look, the Italians do it right. When you're working on a set with the Italians, when you have lunch, you sit down, to a tablecloth and a real civilized meal and wine and then afterwards after they're brutalizing you all day long on the set you come back to the hotel we all shower we put on our nice clothes we have a family dinner for an hour and a half and it's all a love fest but during the course of the day it was very challenging from the set near the hotel there was these uh, uh, little paths and there were snakes that would kill you in like uh, 30 seconds called uh, fertilants and that was a little harrowing, okay? And then we went farther down into the jungle near Kanaima, and we were really in the bush, okay? So bad that uh, uh, I remember being on a hut in the river, and uh, we go by boat, and I'm going, you know, if we, anybody gets bit, there were spiders as big as your head, by the way, and it would rain, and it rained like 20 feet by the time we were there. And I remember one day, Ruggiero was in the boat with the camera operator and the crew, and they're going upriver. They didn't come back for about two and a half hours. I was stuck in this little hut with a parrot and uh, two other actors waiting for everybody to come back. It rained so hard, after a while, I couldn't see more than 10 feet. And uh, they come back, and there's Willie and the rest of them, and they were not happy because we were drenched. But, we're, you know, hey, Ruggiero was drenched too. But sometimes he would do something very naughty. He liked to take the oar and make the boat move to where these spiders were as big as your face and the spider would <laughs> remember those spiders and then he thought it was cute but we we got him we got him later um, and so no, my he first it was a shot <laughs> yes uh, my first That's impression was uh, I don't know what I'm getting into but this is a very charming fellow who speaks a language I don't quite understand but after a while I understood uh, Italians speak with their heart and uh, I have done three jobs with him since then, and it was uh, fantastic. And I'm just glad I survived uh, uh, the jungle because I had a scene for an hour and a half with a fighting scene in the river, and I knew that the water was muddy, and I said, no piranha, because I did my research. I didn't, I didn't know that you don't, you don't pee in the river. If you've seen that show on, uh, you, you just don't, trust me. <laughs> Um, and then there's another thing that I found out later when I went to sit down on a log after this uh, big long fight scene. One of our guys took a machete and killed a snake right near my butt. And I'm going, I'm really nervous. I'm in the middle of the jungle and there's no medevac airport, uh, you know, to get me out of here if I get harmed. And Ruggiero goes, oh, Michael, it, it could have bit me as easily as you. What's the problem? So Costa Rica was a cakewalk, huh? Yeah, it was. And then, and then I go to the, the, to the Indios guides and I go, well, thank you for killing the snake, and I'm so glad there's no piranha because this is a muddy river, and I was up to my knees in mud for an hour and a half, and here's what he tells me. I said, you know, when uh, 
you will say one like uh, serpent, because it's a snake. snake. You must to do. <laughs> yeah, right. It's what my grandma would have told you. Hit it with a stick. Well, they told me that uh, sorry, uh, sorry. The, the mud was safe, it, uh, but it wasn't, Ruggiero. Electric eels like to hang out in the mud. <laughs> so it uh, gave me a panic attack, but we did a beautiful film. The photography that his people do, uh, uh, they worked with him for many years for a reason. You're talking about Cut and Run, Mike? Uh, cut and Run. Yeah. I'm talking about barbarians. I'm talking about We Are Angels. Uh, Ruggiero's uh, people are family, and they are true artists, I salute. Yeah, I know. Has anybody seen Cut and Run? Yeah. I, I like to say, you know, as far as it goes, Michael's performance is great, and he doesn't utter a word in it, you know? And he shows he up. he was too frightened. Yeah. Well, it's all them damn snakes and spiders, yeah. Francesco, what were your first impressions of Ruggiero? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I have a sore throat. No, but normal, because I met Ruggiero in Rome, and he was the brother of... Uh, a girl that she was in my class in school, and so it was fantastic. A very good guy. It was not in Amazon. Huh? It was in Rome. <laughs> in Amazon, it was different. Um, in Rome, it was fantastic. Ruggiero, your um, start, the start of your film career, involved you knowing how to park a car. Your ability to park a car led to you becoming an assistant director and helping out on a very famous director's movie. Do you want to talk about how you first got involved in filmmaking? Bah, I, I start with uh, one big, big uh, maestro, Roberto Rossellini. Uh, I shot with him, uh, like a system, six movies. It is uh, the big experience uh, for me because um, Rossellini was very, very realistic uh, director. And for that, I am realistic with these actors. <laughs> uh, what? <laughs> All true. Uh, for, for, uh, it's not easy with American actors because each one have the problem. <laughs> oh, no, the union is a, have the problem because American people sometimes don't know Europe, Europe uh, European uh, system. As like I said, when they arrive in uh, Rome or in Paris, said have a malaria a, or yellow fever in uh, Europe, sometimes because they don't know what happened. Uh, uh, the same thing is uh, for the director because director Italian or oh, European is, is uh, different from uh, American director, for example. In the script, I have, uh, uh, David has kissed one woman with uh, red hair. I fell in love uh, for uh, one blonde girl. I changed it. He, he arrived in my room. Why? I want, you want, uh, I kiss the blonde girl. I read for two months. I, I, I kiss the red girl. <laughs> it's coming full. Uh, this is so I kiss both of them, you know, just to make yeah, them happy. I was going to say, how rough was I that? I have many, many problems like that. Because <laughs> for David, uh, the other, when I arrive in Venezuela, the director is a doctor, lover, uh, uh, brother, father, assistant, we, we, in the night, I don't sleep because call me him, call me <laughs> uh, Barrymore. I take too much sun. My skin is now is terrible. It's on my foot. What happened? Put, uh, <laughs> well, I'm angry. Oh, oh, David, uh, the, the other problem, Francesca problem. I want to. <laughs> Why? Basically, he's saying all actors are really difficult. It, here. It's very difficult. But uh, very funny. For example, with uh, David, I am masochist because I call him for six movies. I don't know why. Because uh, the fight. Because I'm good. Because I fight every time. <laughs> uh, I am very masochist. But uh, with uh, Michael, it's fantastic. Sweet person. Very sweet person. 
I don't, I don't say that David is a bad actor because he's a good actor, but the character is terrible. <laughs> terrible. The better the actor, the more difficult you say. Michael is Richard. sweet. Gabriel is very sweet, but maybe he don't understand me before uh, when I arrive, Claire, because uh, uh, I am. Uh, I, I changed. I He's changed afraid every time. of you. I changed every time. Maybe I don't. My explanation is no. Very. Um, one actor, Richard Lynch or Ernest Borgnani, said, Ruggiero, when I explain it, it's fantastic. Because he said, You go, do that, do that, do that. And do that, do that. Perfect. I understand perfect. <laughs> yeah, I am like that. It's a creative in the moment. I invented. So tomorrow, you impalate, you go, uh, uh, you must do impalate the one girl. Impalate, put the impalate. girls in the, in the, you know, the yeah. girls. Yeah. Uh, this is the, because, uh, for example, the story for impalate is uh, strange. Voilà. I started this movie, Cannibal Holocaust, without uh, one really script, but only one, uh, many thing, many thing, many, uh, the story of the adultery, uh, adultery, adultery. Uh, the, the story with the, but very different. Uh, when I shoot in something, I send the, the rushes to Mifed in Milano, because it's very important market in, in this moment. Uh, uh, all people buy, buy these rushes. The United Artists said, this movie I want for all world. Uh, the other said, the producer called me, he telephoned me in Amazonia. Ruggiero is a fantastic, all people uh, buy everything. You kill something, you impart something. You <laughs> okay. <laughs> They're happy with I, all I do, the nasty I do the it's... reunion to the, the, the queue tomorrow. I, I said that uh, for uh, I talk with the architect tomorrow. You invented how it's possible to impalate it one India. I said tomorrow morning. Yes, tomorrow morning. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I go to sleep. In the six in the morning, talk talk in my door. Who is the architect Antonello? Antonello, what you want? I prepared for you the impalate. Okay, let me see. Open the door. You have uh, with the one stick, the wood, with the one seat of bicycle, in the, in the, a one one uh, iron for for the back to, to hold the back up. Yeah. After a, in the mouse, the the little the wood the balsa balsa is a. Very yeah, light, yeah, very yeah, light yeah. wood she could hold Just in her mouth. Blood, blood, blood. It's incredible. When I explained that to uh, Quentin Tarantino, Tarantino said, but how much do you pay this? Ten dollars. <laughs> oh, no. He's laughing. This, this movie is, uh, really is a uh, every day invented something. Every day. And, uh, for that, uh, I love it, uh, uh, Gabriel, Francesca, all the, the, the other actor, because uh, when I went to something, is is uh, prepared for that. It's prepared because, uh, okay, I should do that. This is a different uh, uh, method of the direct, Italian director or, or European director. It's not easy sometimes the American uh, actor understand because uh, we change. The, the, I don't shoot it with the uh, storyboard, no, because the, the American uh, crew work with the, the storyboard, with the um, preparation for two months, three months. Me no, because they don't have the money for that. Allah, you, uh, you allow your location to change yes, your the location. Story. I go in the look. I I like it one location. For example, I like the location. Arrived with the crew, everything. Arrived, the policeman said, "You have the permission? 
No. Go away, go away. I must to change <laughs> for that. Uh, and I, this is a uh, creative because uh, you change uh, and maybe you change in better, in much better. That's it. Well, in the, in the same, I'd like to talk, direct this to Carl right now. In that vein that Ruggiero was just talking about, how he shoots kind of on the fly. What he's saying, he's willing to bend his story to fit his locations. Well, Carl wasn't the first choice for Alan Yates either. And we've always laughed. It's been kind of a notorious thing. But, but really, Carl, tell people how you wound up with the role. Wasn't Willie Ames supposed to do it before Cut and Run? He, just, that was a joke. So. It was a lousy Art's one, too. Art's funny. Yeah, yeah. And, and Art is very... funny, no, no, in the, in the story, the <laughs> Cut and Run, very, 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 uh, Williams. <laughs> when they come in, uh, 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 broken all the, the room of the hotel. Broken everything. Two way in the, the bed, the, the, everything. Because it's coming. <laughs> another another actor, Bible American man. actor, one night I stayed with a, my girlfriend in uh, Zelibim. Talk, talk, in the midnight maybe, or one hour in the, in the night. said, who is Michael? What do you want? No, Michael. Another Michael. Another Michael. Another Michael. So what do you want? I want to talk with you. Uh, now, uh, this time. <laughs> so, yes, I want to talk. It's very important. <coughs> OK. <laughs> Get friend, uh, wait, 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 talk uh, with uh, Michael. I go away in the corridor. He said, Michael, what is? What happened? <laughs> I love it. Yes. Why? You are a very good director. Yes, thank you. <laughs> but I like you. Yes, okay. What, what do you, which problem do you have? Which problem? <laughs> it's a very difficult problem. Thank you very much. I like it. You are a very professional director. Oh. Okay, Michael, it's midnight. <laughs> I want to sleep, no? Yeah, but I have a problem. I fall in love for your girlfriend. <laughs> yeah, isn't that a nice uh, thing yeah, to sell the director? Yeah. But this is uh, the problem. In Italian, one man uh, fall in love for one uh, girlfriend, the, the other person. <laughs> you said that. Okay. She you want. No, me, but my fault is uh, I am because I fall in love for her. Okay. Okay. So we sleep. I feel it. Okay, I go to sleep. Okay, okay, okay. In the morning, for the first time, arrive uh, Karen Black in the set. Uh, a, a Michael, together, must to shoot uh, one thing. Action! <laughs> Stop! Michael, what happened? Karim Black said. Okay, okay, again. Motore, action, action! You do better American than you know, you than you realize. Karim Black said. What the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> for after three times, <laughs> I'm for it. Buff fun cool old fast at the castle. Buff professional. And you do know what that means right in every language, me. right? I do that with the finger, no? Okay, go away, go away, doctor. I finish uh, the scene without him. <coughs> okay, you I just shoot, removed him from the scene. I shoot in all the night. Okay. Without him, he arrived in hotel, very tired. He sits in the chair. Is a wait me, Michael. He said, Michael, what happened? Why? That, no, no, it's finished. It's not tomorrow. You are done. Yes, yeah, sorry, 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 sorry. Okay, no, no, no problem. But listen, give me one chance. Don't talk about this with my agent. Okay, no. <laughs> you be a Seven good guy. in the morning. Give him a sign. I go. I, I go to sleep. At Eleven. 
called me Michael. Fucking bastard director! Why are you talk about me with the agent? No! I <laughs> is my producer. My producer after knows that call the, the agent the bastard. <laughs> This is the story, many, many stories, but I love it. I love it because it changes every time. I'd like to get back to uh, Carl being Carl. cast in Cannibal Hall. Yeah, yeah, Carl being cast in Cannibal Hall. Cause well, not, well, no, that wasn't. Not. Eh? Please, Carl, get back on track. One Willie Ames joke, fuck that up. But yeah, oh, yeah. Carl, how uh, how were you cast in Cannibal Holocaust? Well, I, I think I'm the only actor here that wasn't cast by Ruggiero. Exactly. And, 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 and you, there's actually, you, you, like, the, you the cast, notorious... You cast uh, Perry Perkinen and, and his friend. I don't know. What was his friend's name? You mean his lover? No, l'amico di Pirkanen, che poi non è venuto. Do you remember the, ah, the original yes. Alan Yates? Yeah. Yes, Alan Yates. He, he shoot in, the, in New York after. One Perry little Perkinen. piece. Little piece. Yeah, so, and well, you got them out of New York. You got them out of uh, an you acting know, school in New York. But I knew Bill Williams, who was a casting director in no, New York. Was, uh, but was he knew. Lou DeGimo. Yeah, oh, oh Lou DeGimo? Lou DeGimo. Well, he did you, but Bill Williams called me. It's like ah, you. Yeah, I got so this maybe. call. Luckily, oh, yes, yeah, so you, yeah. yeah. you didn't get a 5 o'clock yeah, in the morning. Did you? No, no, it wasn't 5 in the morning. It yeah. was about uh, 2 o'clock in the afternoon on a Friday, Lucky and I was man, supposed to be on the way to Connecticut. <laughs> And uh, my girlfriend was up in Connecticut, and, and Bill Williams' office called me and said, are you available? And I said, yes. And they said, for three weeks? And I said, yes. And they said, will you go to South America? And I said, yes. And they said, get over here. And I said, yes. who am I? What, what do you want me? Who am I? They said, just come as you are. So I just dashed across town and uh, got to the office, and I handed the guy... There was an Italian guy from New Jersey there, and he had a picture of the other guy. He had a picture of the other guy, and he had, and he looked at my picture, and he looked at the two of them, and said, "Okay," and he looked at the back, and he said, "Oh, I guess you've done some stuff." And then he said, "So, and what size shoes do you wear?" And I said, uh, 10 and a half. He said, "Oh, okay. Well, you wait in the back room here," and I went and went in the back room, and they saw one more guy, and um, and then they, he came in and said that I had the part because I had the right size feet. There you go. But, but ladies and gentlemen, he got I the had, job I he had, had tiny feet. I'd been in every play in high school. I was the best actor in my college. I'd been, uh, I, I'd been studying with the best acting teachers in New York for years, and I had the right size feet. So, uh, so I don't know, you know. It might happen for you, too. They, hey, they, did, they didn't have to change his wardrobe, so, you know, he got the job. Obviously, one of the most notorious things about Cannibal Holocaust is all the animal violence. That certainly wasn't your first film with animal violence. You, you had an eel and waves of lust and Jungle Holocaust, of course. But I'm wondering how the atmosphere on set was. Maybe Francesca and Gabriel York can talk a little bit about what the cast and crew really, um, how they really felt about it. I think um, my, my guess is that they really didn't care as much as some of them are acting like they did. But in any event... Um, what were your perceptions of how people reacted to that on set? 